بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على أفضل المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه الطيبين الطاهرين رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي وبعد All praise and all thanks be to Allah سبحانه وتعالى I start with a quick reminder before the class something I noticed between Adhan and Iqam some of us came here الحمد لله في صلاة المغرب one of the best things we can learn, one of the best things we can do, the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, where he says, the time between Adhan and Iqama, what do you do in it? In that time, dua is very good, but there is another hadith in, uh, narrated by Nawawi in his book of Adhkar, that the Prophet وسلم, said the following, when you are between Adhan and Iqama, you start saying, Subhanallah, Subhanallah, Subhanallah ten times. When you finish, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, responds to you, that is for me. And then after saying subhanallah ten times, you say, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, ten times. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and that is for me. And then, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, ten times. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responds back again, that is for me. And then, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, ten times. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responds again, that is for me. Then you follow that with ten times of Astaghfirullah. 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 And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responds by saying, So I did. You are forgiven. So one thing, yeah, inshallah, we can learn also from this class. Whenever we come for salah, if you come between Adhan and Iqamah, remember that dhikr. Subhanallah ten times, La ilaha illallah ten times, Alhamdulillah ten times, Allahu Akbar ten times. Then Astaghfirullah. And you're forgiven all your sins. So that's something a reminder before, inshallah, I mean, uh, we start going through the class again. Uh, to start the class, a quick summary. What is this class about? It's about chivalry. And we discussed that last time. And many people, chivalry, I thought that's a Western concept. Well, chivalry is not a Western concept. It's, a, it's an Islamic concept. And scholars spoke about it. And last time we spoke about the definition of chivalry. And this time I want to go a little bit further, if you will. And some of the things we said about chivalry that you need to remember from last time. What is chivalry? What is futur? Is to be able to use the best and the most beautiful manners with the creation. That I, I am, that the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not a veil between me and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In many cases, a problem we have in this life that the creation, the way people handle me, the way people praise me, the way people interact with me, that can be a veil that's between me and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The importance of this concept, that when, when we study this, the output of it, the outcome of it, that the creation, whether they praise me or they not praise me, they insult me, whether they're happy with me or not happy with me, whether calamities are happening, everything in the creation becomes a mean for me to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in other words, it is my ability to reflect Allah's most beautiful attributes. We said that last time. That our, our good manners are derived from the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My ability to reflect, to be, in, to be inside of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in such a way that I can reflect those divine attributes to the creation. That is the art of chivalry. That's chivalry that we're speaking about. Uh, before continuing with more definitions and what, uh, yani, what is chivalry, some questions. When we say khuluq, when we say manners, uh, number one, can they change? What if I have a bad manner? What if I'm an angry person? Is that something that's in me that I cannot change? And what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking me is mujahada is to stand against it and be patient, and, but I can never change it? Is, is khuluq, when somebody is generous, is that a divine gift? Or khuluq can change. That's the first, that's the very first important question. How can I change it? Right? Those are all important questions. Now, the answer of that, and that's where we start, stands with the definition of khuluq that we described last time. That's the essence of Futuwa. We said, khuluq huwa hayatun rasiqa fi nafs. Tazdur anha al-aqwal wal-af'al duna takalluf wa biyus wa bisuhula. It is an entity that's ingrained in me from which actions and deeds and words come out with ease. So what we're doing in this class is not, uh, uh, eventually, it's not that I just do good deeds. Somebody insults me, I forgive him. 
That's good, that's a good deed, but that's not khuluq. What we're aiming for in this class is that I change inwardly in such a way that this good response, this beautiful response becomes natural, becomes easy. There is no hardship in me. That my natural response without thinking becomes, I can forgive, I can pardon, I'm generous, naturally, instantaneously. I don't have to make it up. That's what, we, so can that change? Yani, is that possible? And some people said, you know what? The first group said that's impossible. And they, and they said, you know what? It's with analogy. Remember the analogy of khalq and khuluq? We said khuluq is the inner image of the heart. It's the way my heart looks. It is the way my heart and me reflect acts that is, are incident on me. And we said khalq, the outward creation, if, if you will, the way I look, the way my body looks, right? The way I, I, I look is the way I reflect light. Remember that definition? Like, I, how do I look? I look at a specific way, it is the way I reflect light. Can I change it? Some people said, you can change it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created you that way, that's your khalq, khalas, done. And they said, maybe khuluq is the same way. Baby manners, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created me an angry person. And what he's asking me for is what? To strive against it. But I can never change it. You understand that? Most scholars disagree with this. In Islam, no. Your internal image, your internal quality can actually change. You can change it. It is changeable. And Imam al-Ghazali, describing this, he gives us an analogy that's easy to remember. And I, I hope that you can remember this. He said, look to your outward image. Can you change your outward image? Many people say no, but I disagree with that. Why? We all know some brothers here, when you want to develop some muscles, what do we do? You can go and exercise. And when you go and exercise, I change. Many of the sisters, yeah, subhanAllah, they don't, they tell you I'm overweight. So what do you do? You do thing, something, right? You start having a diet, and when you have a diet, you change. So Imam al-Ghazali is saying, therefore, even khuluq, you can change your khuluq too. Now, the question of how, how can I change it? What are the possible ways? This is what we're looking at. Before I start with Fatoa and the levels of it, how can you change it? Three things. Number one, Al-Khuluq, which is my internal manners. A part of it is by Fitrah. And that's the answer of the first question. Can, uh, is, is, is my Khuluq something that I gain? Is good manners a property of a believer only? But we, I see an atheist, and he has better manners than me, isn't that true? We, and I see a Muslim, and his manners are horrible. And you are telling me, which is what we're saying, that khuluq, this, those manners are derived from Tawheed. This man is not a believer, and he has good manners. Why? And the answer is the following. The first thing, that a part of our akhlaq is from our fitrah, is jibillah. And that's, you can derive that from the hadith, and he, I'm going to be a little bit technical here, the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When uh, Al-Ashaj ibn Qais, one uh, uh, leader of a tribe, came to him, and he saw what he did. He came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, tied his camel, you know, he started wearing a good abaya slowly, and then he entered to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. As he entered, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told him this, Ya Ashaj, Ya Ashaj, Ashaj by the way means a scar. This man had a scar on his face. Ya Ashaj, inna fika khuluqain yuhubbuhum Allah. You have two good akhlaq, two good characters ingrained in you that Allah loves. Al-hilm wal anah. Forbearance and not being hasty. You know what being hasty is? Quickly, I want to go, I need to go there. Uh, agitated. And that is the opposite. When you, you walk slowly, you know, you're, you're calm. You have sakina. You're not in hurry, you're not a, you're not a hasty person. And he said, you, those two qualities in you, Allah loves. This man asked him, are those two qualities that I managed to gain, or are they qualities that Allah gave me? And he said, no, those are two qualities that Allah, جبلك Allah عليهم. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to you. What can we conclude from this hadith? The very first meaning here is what? There are some manners, that you do not need to strive for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by default, by your fitrah, when you're born, you're born pure, you're born with good akhlaq, you don't have to strive for it. Uh, another interesting thing here with the, uh, regarding this point, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us, what did He create us from? You, you know the ayat and 
when uh, human beings created many things, water, right? I mean, the two elements that we compose of water and dust. When we want to make wudu, what do we use? Water. And if there is no water, what do you use? Dust. You are created from the two purest elements. I don't know if you see this meaning. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created you originally pure. That's your fitr. And by the way, when you combine them, you combine water and dust and you know you have clean. Another word used in the Quran, what's clean? You know, soil. And what is soil? Many of us here are like, that's not good. But if you ask a farmer, soil is what? Is the essence of everything good. When you have soil, it is from that soil that all fruits and trees and goodness, khair comes, right? The meaning, oh you human, your essence, what is ingrained in you, you're created from pure things and you have the ability to generate very good things. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, out of His bounty, He created us with our original fitra to be good. Why is that important? Why is that important to this topic? The following is important. One, we change our fitrah. Be very careful with that. Our fitrah originally, if left, many of the, the good akhlaq will be in, in us. Why sometimes we are not, we're not that way? We have changed it. How did we change our fitrah? Is it, is it possible to change our fitrah? Yes. And I'm going to give an example about that. But there is another thing. Sometimes, and this is the worst, and this is why I, I really need to stress this point. When a person, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, create him, and he has good manners. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him this ability to be generous. Gave him the ability to be good. You know what happens? Isn't that a bounty from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Many people, when they are created with good qualities, you know what they do? I don't need Allah anymore. Hey, I'm a good person. I don't lie. I'm generous. Uh, I wear hijab. You wear hijab because you were born in a Muslim family. Uh, I pray because your parents taught you how to pray. Right? I'm generous because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created you generous. Now what happens to that person? When a person has good akhlaq, you know what happens to most people? I don't need Allah anymore. I'm a good person. Right? And therefore, this lectures about futuwa is not for me. Coming to, yani, they feel what? They feel I'm good. I'm a good human being. And therefore, they see that. And therefore, the drive to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is almost not existent. They're self-satisfied. I'm self-sufficient. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, no, the human being transgresses because he thinks he can be independent. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created you from nothing. And it is because Allah gave you, do you understand the concept I'm trying? Is it because Allah gave you good akhlaq? The reward coming from you is what now? I'm a good person. And you know what? That person who thinks that way, he has a horrible manner. You know what it is? He's generous to people. He's kind. He says good words. All good akhlaq, right? But he has an ailment in him that's destructive. Self-admiration. He sees that he's good. He has sometimes arrogance. And that is when somebody sins, he says, look at what people are doing. Subhanallah. Look at how they're miserly. Because Allah created you and He didn't let you pass through what that person passes through. He created you in a better condition. He gave you a gift that it's easy for you to be generous. That was a reason for me to not look down on those who are miserly. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created me in a Muslim family. My parents were good. They taught me how to pray. It's easy for me. That person, he doesn't know how to pray. So sometimes by our fitrah, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates us with good qualities, those good qualities become a hindrance. They become a source of self-admiration. I become, yeah, and that's worse, arrogance. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us what? لا يدخل الجنة من كان في قلبه مثقال ذرة من كبر. He will not be admitted to paradise. Who? The one who has an atom way of arrogance. This arrogance and self-admiration in his heart, it's destructive. And shaitan, when he sees that, the scholars will tell you, you know what he does with that kind of a person? He leaves him alone. Yeah, I want you to imagine this. If shaitan, if shaitan sees a person who has good qualities, kind, you think shaitan is going to try to do what now? Make him slip. No, let him be the way he is. Why? He has good qualities. If he slips, he'll wake up. If that person, if I make him slip, and he, because he'll wake up, what have I done? And he will see his need to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he will start going to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But him like that, 
is very good. He's in ghafla. He's heedless. He thinks he's good. His thinking of himself that way is his worst sin. That's enough for him. Let him be. And that person lives and dies away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The journey towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not even start. So that's very important. Be very careful that our fitrah should not be a reason. I should be thankful. Number one. So what do we learn from this? I said something. What is the exercise of it? If you think you have a good quality, and everyone sitting here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, created you, engraved in you some good quality. Thank for them. Never see them that this is me. When, when you find I can do something easily, never attribute that to me. That's ujb. Ujb. Why ujb is bad? Self-admiration. Why is it bad? What, what does it have to do with the attributes of Allah? I, I said every good khuluq has to do with the attributes of Allah. Right? When I'm a mu'jab, when I'm a person, I'm self, having self-admiration, you know what it means? I forgot that everything I have is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The gifts that Allah gave me veiled me. I'm veiled by my qualities, I'm veiled by my attributes from Allah. And therefore, I don't see that Allah is the awwal, He's the first. One of the meanings of this name, the first, is He's the first in everything that's good in your life. Everything you, everything you do, everything that's good in your life is from Him, not from me. That also has to do, a scientist, nowadays you see it. Wallahi, I see it in our society, what do we say? I, I'm a scientist in the 20th century. Look what we discovered, look what we found out. We went where no one went before. Right? You, you know What's the problem in this thing? I said, I. I think, um, I, we studied. I spent money, our research, you see that? I saw that I did, I discovered science, right? Science is, who discovered science in our thoughts? We do. And through our science, I have faith in science. People tell you that, right? You know what you're missing here? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, وَلَا يُحِيطُونَ بِشَيْءٍ مِنْ عِلْمٍ have you ever you know Ayat al-Kursi? When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, look at this word. La yuhituna bi shayin min alim. Humans, you do not even know or can get anything, not of Allah, anything of Allah's knowledge. Allah's knowledge, Allah's knowledge about things, you cannot attain yourself. It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that gives it to you. Scientists understand that very well. You go to Einstein or Newton and they tell you. you, you they sit and they work, 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 nothing. Einstein, I'll give one example, or nothing. And then he says, my happiest thought. When the idea clicked, when I was sitting in the patent office, you know, sitting, doing nothing, not even. And then all of a sudden, the thought came, and the, uh, this is it. And then that was the thought that inspired the general theory of relativity. And, you know, equations, and, and, and. Where did that thought come from? You weren't doing math, were you? You were sitting alone, and all life scientists understand that, and all of a sudden, they tell you the idea came, came from whom? That is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You see that? Therefore, whatever I discovered is not, it was a gift. The way I see it now, Ya Allah, you gave me this, you gave this idea to me, Alhamdulillah. If I don't see that, I become a mu'jab. I say things that are arrogant. Right? So that, that's an important thing. Thank, we have to thank for every good quality we have. This is number one for uh, The second thing, khuluq can change. I said, I gave you an example, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates us with a good, yani good manners. How can it change? One of the things that all of us here would agree on, and have you tell you, co company, companionship, right? You know what I mean? Be careful, that starts when you're a baby. And this is very important. Our problems is, we wait till we're 15, 16, 17, 18, and then I want to change my khuluq. You've been nurturing it 10 years. It's very difficult now. The reason, what I'm going to say here is very important when we have kids. Be very careful at the age of one, two, three, their companions. Who are they around? Tell the things that akhlaq that can change their fitr. Now, I'll give you an, a practical example here. This is very practical. There is one person, and uh, yeah, you know, sometimes when you have kids, you want time for yourself, right? And he needed time for himself and yani, him and his wife and they need a babysitter. Huh? But they got a non-Muslim babysitter. And non-Muslims, they have different levels of yani, akhlaq and manners and morals, right? I can't blame them. So he got this 
girl, not Muslim, to yeah, take care of the kids when we were doing, yeah, we have time for ourselves. One day, she gets her boyfriend with her. And for her, there is nothing wrong, I can't blame her. She gets, she gets her boyfriend, and she's yeah, babysitting. And this person returns home, he opens the door to find what? He finds her and her boyfriend, yeah, sitting, doing, I don't want to mention, you know what? And his kids are watching. What would you do? What? But you know what that person did? Nothing. Next day, he kept that person. Is that possible? Is that ugly? What will happen to those kids when they see this? And they see that their parents are okay with it. Their definition of good and bad, their haya, the khuluq of haya is gone. Right? This. What I just said, now what are we here thinking? How, what a horrible person, right? That person is me and you. That baby said that I'm speaking about is TV. It's TV. TV. When sometimes parents, I want time for myself, and because I, I just want, I'm, I'm tired, I want something to keep my kids busy. So what is the best thing? Sit on. And I leave them. And what happens? They're quiet and then, alhamdulillah, good. What's on TV? What are they watching? Aren't they watching what I just said? And the most amazing thing, do you stop it? Next day, you leave them to watch it again. You're changing their filter. Our manners get affected from what we see. What are you watching on TV? Uh, brother, I thought this is about children. What does this have to do with dealing with people? My ability, my ability to show good manners to people derives that my heart is beautiful. That my heart is connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the source of beauty. If there is no connection between my heart and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I can't reflect it. This alters it. This has everything to do with it. What am I watching on TV? Sometimes we, we, we're not careful. We got desensitized. That affects me. What jokes are you hearing when you, when you watch a, you know, some people watch soap opera, some people watch, I don't know, Fraser or whatever his name is. Or, you guys, and he's funny. Be careful. Be careful. That's affecting you. When you watch it a long time, it affects you. So companionship is important. So give me something practical to do. I'll give you another practical thing to do. The best companionship is the companion of what? People that are abideen, right? People that are in, in connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. People that are in dhikr. People that are in ibadah. People that, if you sit with them, maybe I take some of those manners, right? Where can I find them? I'm going to tell you something very practical. This is practical way to attain akhlaq, easy way, practical. Nature. Nature. If you look carefully to us, even with our kids, the way we are raised, the way our day is, it's indoors. Right? You go to the gym to exercise, indoors. You go to work, you work on a computer. You ride your car, indoors. When was the last time I had a walk in nature? What does this have to do with akhlaq? Does it have anything to do with manners? Does this have anything to do with my ability to be patient? Yes. Proof. You check this for yourself. You go to the countryside, the village. How are people manners there? In the past, not <laughs> today. You tell me, you go to the countryside, even today, you go to Midwest, Columbus, Ohio, somewhere in the outskirts, and you find people, how are they? Kind, right, smiling. You go to downtown LA, downtown New York, how are people? Did you notice, is there a pattern? Why? Can you see the relation? I'll tell you in what I just said. It's obvious for me. When I around nature, what is nature? People see nature as nice things. Even atheists like to do that, right? But I'll tell you why. All those things that you see, the trees, the birds, the ocean, the sand, the desert, everything in the creation, the birds. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us everything is in tasbih. Sabbaha lillahi ma fil samawati wa ma fil ard, right? In the Quran. Those things that you, you see as things, they're not things. They're Muslims. And they're in dhikr. And they're in ibadah. And they're in sujood. Walking among them, I'm walking among a creation in tasbih and dhikr and sujood. That affects me. That's why many people, when they walk on the beach, they calm down. They don't know why. 
But as a Muslim, if you want to maximize this benefit, homework. How can I improve my manners? Regularly. Regularly. If possible, every day, have a walk. If you can't find a natural place, find a natural park. A park with trees. Go. I personally, I tell you, the best thing, go there after fetch. One of the best things you can do if you want. And you tell me how your day went after that. Well, I tried. Go pray fetch in the masjid. And go after praying fetch and doing the afkar. You know when the sun is rising? You know the beginning of the day? And all the birds are doing what? Their tasbih and salam. You hear them. Now when you go and walk in the park, walk with that mentality. Not just people when they walk, how they walk quickly. No. Slowly. I'm going to enter into a region where creation is in dhikr. I will be in dhikr too. No cell phones. No iPods. Nothing in your ears. Turn it off. No people to talk with. Silence. The only thing you do, one of two things. Either dhikr or tafakkur. Contemplating on what's around you. One of the afkar, if, if you say, I, I, I'm not good with afkar, say astaghfirullah. May Allah forgive me. Astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. Just say that. You have this walk. 20 minutes, 30 minutes, then go you to your work. If you did that and you tell me, if, if, I, if I started my day this way, and I went to work and somebody is angry, what will come out of my heart, naturally? I'm calm. I'm serene, right? Versus I wake up to an alarm. I, come on, have to take the kids to the school. You know, like, and then I go to work agitated. The hadith I just said of Ajaj ibn Qais, did you notice something in it? Scholars speak about that. The Prophet وسلم, remember the hadith, two good qualities that Allah loved. What were they? Forbearance and an anay. Forbearance is my ability to, when harshness comes, ugliness comes, I'm, I'm able to respond with kindness. I don't get angry easily. That's hilm. It's a khulq of hilm. There is a relation between hilm Anger and anah. If a person is an angry person, brother, I'm, I'm always angry. Tell me about something to do. You want something to do, right? You know what it is? Are you an agitated person? Are you a hasty person? The, what does that have to do with it? It has everything to do with anger. Agitation, you, you understand what I'm speaking about? The way I go to work even. Drive the car, you close the door. How do you walk to your office? Just that, 10 minutes. How do you walk to your class? Usually, if you look to yourself, you're walking how in a hurry, you know, quickly. No. How do you drive? 65, 75. Come on, I have to. I sit on the internet. I need a faster service. You see this hastiness? You want to, you want to mend your hollow of anger. You want to be able. You want to be forbearant. Start here. Slow down. Is that easy? What do you mean slow down? And practically, when you go to work, don't take large steps. Take small steps. When you drive your car, don't drive 65. You want to cure yourself? Drive 55. I can't do that. Many of us here, no way, right? That's what it takes. Drive 55 and be in dick. I will reach work late. That's why you wake up earlier. Our excuse is what? Brother, if I do what you said, I, I arrive late at work. See the next here? Are you interested in changing or not? Yes, wake up earlier. That's why you wake up earlier. Why? Because it's not going to take me 10 minutes. I'm not in a hurry. It's going to take me 50, 20 minutes. Is that simple? Can we do this? Can you have an A? Can you learn this on the internet? I'll say something even more difficult. Don't get the fast internet service. Get, I'm not going to be harsh. Get the 2 megabit per second. Don't get the... You want to treat yourself and be patient. Open it, it takes three seconds. We're trained five, ten windows at the same time. I can't wait. Where is it? And then, it, it, well, why? Those things, you think I'm joking. It's, it's agitation. You know what agitation is? I'm an agitated person. And when things are not doing, yeah. when my son now, I'm telling him, get into the car. And Baba, my shoes, like. Get into the car, right? I'm going to miss Salah, I need to be in the masjid. You need to be in the masjid, it's a good thing, but what happened now? You're agitated, you're angry. Where is your forbearance? Gone. When I return back home from work, how do we return home? You drive your car, right? 
6 o'clock, I need to be there 6.10. Why? Before going to your home, Wallahi, just don't walk to your home. Take 5 minutes, 10 minutes, you know, you sit in the car, even if it's the pathway. You don't have to walk it in 10 seconds. Why don't you take a walk in your neighborhood first? Just 5 minutes. 5 minutes. Yeah, your kids are not going to hate you for 5 minutes. Take a walk around, a walk around the house, 5 minutes. And be in the car. Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah. Then walk in the house. Will it make a difference? Yes. If I'm coming from work with this mentality, working, 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 driving, 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 right? And then I walk in, I open the house, dinner is not ready. My kid is shouting, I'm agitated already, what would come out? But if I did what I said before going in, remembering that, walking around the house, five minutes in the calming down, slowly. And then you walk inside the house, be a different person. Is that practical enough? So sohba is very important, companionship. And I give you a practical example, companionship. TV is a companionship, be very careful. Video games are companionship, be very careful. Nature, one important companionship. But there is another level of companionship that's very important. What is it? Would you like to be with the Prophet and the companions? Would that affect me? Yes. Therefore, one of the fastest ways to change my khuluq is to read the biographies, the biographies of righteous people. And that's why, if you remember last time, I spent most last time giving you examples. People who were here remember that. Example, 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 and many people, what does that have to do with it? It has everything to do with it. Abdullah bin Mubarak used to say that. Great companion, he used to stay home for a long time. And people would ask him, aren't you bored? And you're staying home for a long time alone. Can you do that? Can you stay home alone? No internet, no phones, no iPods. I'm sorry, I couldn't. <laughs> it's okay. You want them to sit here? <laughs> so, this man is sitting home alone. And he's, why? Aren't you bored? And he said, how can I be bored? I'm sitting home with the companion and the prophet. What does he mean? Reading the hadith of the Prophet, reading his biography, reading about the righteous people and their good manners. That helps me. So reading about those people will have an effect, will have an effect on the way I am. Knowing about celebrities will have an effect on me. Loving celebrities will have an effect on me. Many people here, if I ask, do you love the Prophet وسلم, many would say yes. If you're truthful with yourself, is it really a yes? Yeah, I mean, this is another topic. If you look carefully, it is not that much. It is not that much. That's the, one of the problems. So companionship is important. Number three, and this is where we we'll take it. Mujahada. The khuluq, the manners, the internal image can be changed. Through what? Mujahada. They call it riyadah. The translation of the word riyadah is, in Arabic, those of you who understand, what is riyadah? Sports. Sports. Why did they pick that name? Very interesting. What does sports do to me? When you play sports as brothers, what do you expect of your body? Changes, right? So if I want to change my body, as I said before, I want to develop muscles, what should I do? I go to the gym. Right? One time? Is it good to go one time? Two times? I have to be regular, right? And when you go to the gym, what, what weight do you carry? Do you carry? Do you carry the small weight and that's it? Do you exercise just five seconds? What do you do over there? You sweat. I sweat. I exercise. And exercise means what? Regular, every day, long time. There is pain. Is there pain or not? And I ask myself to do things that are a little bit beyond my capacity, right? And that way, if I keep doing that, keep doing that, keep doing that, what happens to my body? Changes. Similarly, similarly, akhlaq can change the same way. Spiritual exercise. If I'm a, a miserly person, what should I do? You need to exercise in that domain. Every day I should give charity. Even five dollars, ten dollars. And you should increase it. You know, like, and not one time, not two times, regularly. 
So there is something here that's important. I need to exercise. Many of us would know, many of the brothers would say, I don't know what to do. The type of exercise I do, I mean, if, if you want to, biceps, right? You want good biceps. What kind of weights, like, what, what do you do? You have to have knowledge. Certain exercise will develop the biceps. Another, maybe my legs, another my stomach, right? And many of us, would, the first thing that comes to my mind is what? I don't have that knowledge. Which exercise is for what? And that's our problem. I'm suffering from uh, miserness. I'm suffering from self-admiration. Which is the spiritual exercise necessary for that? I don't know. Right? Many of us, what would we do? You get a coach. You know what a coach is? Not a doctor. Not a PhD doctor. A PhD doctor will tell you about the nonsense. That's not what I want. I want a coach. Someone to watch me. See that? And when he watches me, he tells me, for you, do this. For you, do that. Tailor to your body. In the spiritual realm, that is something we are missing today. There is something they call Shaykh al tarbiya a murabbi, not just a Shaykh. Not just a Shaykh you take a fatwa from or a fatwa from. A Shaykh that knows you. That will tell you things related to you, teach you lessons to you personally. That to develop this khuluq, you need to be doing this. I'll give you one example for that uh, we can relate to. I once asked Sheikh Yasser, you know, Sheikh Yasser in Mission View, he, his Sheikh, one of his Shaykh is Sheikh Salah al great scholar. And I asked him this question, again trying to learn on that level. Tell me something you learned from Sheikh Salah al and, and hear what, it's not a hadith. I'm asking him about this, tell me something you really, يعني, and he told me, yes, I remember one time, this is his Sheikh, and he loves him, great scholar. One time back in the day, I got a, a you know Islamic tape, Islamic lecture, and I'm hearing it. And the, the lecturer in it started saying what started defaming Sheikh Salah al In that lecture, the lecturer said, and from the scholars of this and the scholars of that is this person, the so-called Salah al-Sawi, and he's that, and he's this, and he's that, and and of course Sheikh Yasser, that's his words to me. He became offended. He became what angry. Isn't that anger for Allah, right? You know what I mean? And he wants to do what now? How dare you? We need to respond to him. I need to respond. See that? So what he did, he said, I went with Sheikh Salah al-Sawi. We were driving. I was driving with him. So I told him, Sheikh, let, let us hear this tape. You know what I mean? He's going to put the tape. So now the Sheikh would hear that and what would happen? And, he, and you know, answer back. He wants to do what? Look, what? look at what people are saying. Right? So he puts the tape. Here is the response that came from Sheikh Salah al He said the following to me. He said once this, this person started to say whatever he has to say, Sheikh Salah said, me, I'm that, me. And he started smiling and he started laughing. And then he said, he reached out, stop the tape. Then he continued, stop the tape. And then he looked to me and he said the following. Our brothers transgressed against us. May Allah forgive us and forgive them and grant us both us and them Jannah with the Prophet together. You see what happened here? He, what did this man see? He saw that you're my student. You want me, you put that tape because you want what from me? You want me to respond, right? You're angry. You can't take it. This is your fellow Muslim brother. Do you love him? Before responding to him. Do not attempt to respond to him if you're in that mode. You see what he's teaching him? So he taught him what he needs to learn, which is what? Not the response. I'm not going to respond against the allegation. What you need to learn is what? That you have to love him. And that is your brother. Full stop. I'm not going to listen to it. You understand the concept here? That's a moral. We lack on that area. So the concept of mujahada is necessary. When we, as I said, when we go for mujahada, when we go to the uh, gym or for the sisters that have a diet, what khuluq do you need? You need to be patient, right? The reason I'm saying this and stressing it, whatever I'm going to say next, if we do not have patience, my manners are not going to change. If you're coming to this class thinking I'm going to say something, I'm going to learn something, he's going to say something, it's going to change, go back home. Are you willing to sweat? Are you interested in changing your manners or not? Are you patience? 
Are you, are, am I patient? Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani once, and he was, subhanAllah, his answers to the point. One time, he told people that, why you are not patient? Yeah, yeah. People ask, Sheikh, I'm not patient, you know, I'm not, it's too hard. What do that? It's, I'm not, I can't find patience. He said, why you're not patient? You want to know why you're not patient? Because you have no interest in wilayah. Because you have no real interest in becoming close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's your problem. The reason I'm patient in the gym, because I really want to change. The sisters, I really need to lose weight. I'm patient. Our problems, and that's a question for me and you right here. Are you interested in being close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or not? And that's another topic. Many of us, we lie to ourselves. We say I am, but the reality is I'm not. And that's a starting point. One khuluq I have to start with, never lie to yourself. Do not lie, sidq. If I'm not patient, if I find that I, I'm not patient, I'm really not interested in being close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I don't love the Prophet that much. This is not... If this class is two hours, would you sit? I get bored. Where is my phone? Can you sit still for one hour? Why? Because it, it's not of interest to you. Can you be patient if, if I made this a boring lecture? You know, like, would you be... Well, it's, it's a dilemma we have. I was actually discussing with one brother. I want to go through what Ibn Qayyim says in Madarij al about this photo. But one problem, many people are not going to be patient. If I go through the scholarly text and it's amazing, nowadays, unless you put examples, give the people are not, they're concerned, they can't. Why? I have to be patient on ilm, on knowledge. And if I'm not patient, I have to be truthful. Yes, I'm not patient. Why? My drive towards Allah is weak. Why? And then that's my thought. I don't lie. And therefore, my first homework becomes, Ya Allah, Allahumma rzuqni lahmat sifqna. Allahumma rzuqni sifqa talab. Oh Allah, if I discover this about myself, if I discover my drive towards Allah is not strong, the resolve is very weak, then I do what? Therefore, what the first, my dua, every day I have to be making the dua, Oh Allah, please grant me truthfulness of resolve. Make me truthful in seeking you. Make me steadfast. Ramadan is coming. Throughout Ramadan, I'm going to be saying that dua every day. That's a starting point. Right? Now, I want to start, after those, I mentioned three things, if you remember, to change our akhlaq. Remember, fitrah, we have to be thankful for it. Be very careful. Thankful about what Allah gave you, number one. Number two, companionship. And companionship is not what we think of just TV is companionship. Games are companionship. Nature is companionship. My atmosphere around me is companionship. What I look at is companionship. So that's number two. Number three, the concept of mujahada. To strive. Uh, to change my khuluq, like the physical body, there is going to be some work necessary. Now, let's start. All this is an introduction. Now I'm going to go through the text of Ibn Qayyim. And he tells us about this uh, station of chivalry. How to attain it. Right? The very first thing he says, First of all, one thing we notice, he says, and it's on three levels. Here I can stop and we can have 15 minutes. Why? There is a lesson here. Akhlaq are levels. Manners, good manners are not all one level. They are different levels. The hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa would suffice in that. What is the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa He said, Ana za'in bayt fi rabad al-jannah. لمن ترك المراء وهو له محق وأنا زعيم بيت في وسط الجنة لمن ترك الكذب وإن كان مازحا He said I am proclaiming a house in the valleys of Jannah you know the lower level of Jannah lower level of Jannah for who? for the one who leaves argumentation leaves argumentation even if the right was with him you know when we argue my point and your point and the Prophet is saying what? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards you if you just do what? I'm not asking you to do. Leave. Leave argumentation. Leave it. Even if the right is with me. Leave it. If you can just do that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides you the house in the lowest level of Jannah. What is the middle level of Jannah? For the one that does not lie. 
even if he's yani, just joking or making fun or yani, trying to like, let people see. Why is that important? Why do we, why do we lie when we make making yani, Many of us try to be pleasant. Many of us try to make other people laugh, right? Why? Because I want them to like me. See that? It's a deficiency. I want them to like me. I need to be cool. And to be cool, I need to be what? Funny. And I need to... And sometimes there is nothing funny, so I do what? In order that they like me, I need to be funny, but I don't have a funny story, so I make something up. I lie. See how... So the, the origin of this outward lie is what? It's something else. It is me seeing the creation. I need you. I want you to love him. I'm proof for you. See that? The one who has the ability not to lie. Just do not lie. Even when you laugh. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removes you. And when the Prophet was asked, what about the top level of Jannah? He said, those are for the people with the personal khuluq, with the beautiful manners. This hadith tells us the, the thing that I... The akhlaq are levels. You see that? So Ibn Qayyim, again, in explaining this, he says the first level. First thing to do about shibri, the starting point, if you will. He says, level number one. Tarq al khusum wa taghafl an al zalla wa nisyan al adin. Tarq al khusum. To leave animosity. Leave. Remember the hadith? Leave. Leave. Before gaining, before acquiring good manners, you have to leave bad manners. That's our, my starting point. Before getting the good, I have to leave the bad. Leave. Leave in what? Animosity. Tark al That I don't see people as my, my biggest enemy. If you want anything to do with chivalry, my biggest enemy is me. People, wallahi, even somebody who insults you, he didn't harm me. When I die and he dies, even if he are, what he did against me did not hurt me. You know what hurts me? Is the way I respond. Somebody I mean, insulted me. Well, 100 years from now, how is that going to look? Well, you know how it's going to look really? What did you do to him? If he insulted me and I insulted him back, I go to my grave and what happens? I insulted him back and I really gave it to him. So I transgressed. Guess what will happen? This person on the day of judgment takes your hasanat. Did he hurt me? He did. See that? Versus a person that insulted me and I chose to do nothing, just turn away. It really did it, really, it didn't hurt. What hurt me is me. My inability to be patient. My anger is the thing that hurts me. My biggest enemy really was not him. He could have been a reason why I entered Jannah. You know? Somebody insulted me and I forgave him. Allah might forgive me for that. So people are not my biggest enemy is me. Realizing that, and that's one of the definitions of chivalry. And takun khasman li rabbik ala nafsi. The Imam al Tirmidhi said that about chivalry. When he was asked about it, he said that you would be an enemy for Allah against yourself. Tark al khusum. And there is more about this. Because many, many people would say, what do you mean? What if someone is doing something wrong? What if someone uh, slandering the Prophet? What if someone is. I get angry for Allah. You know what I mean? The reason this science is important, what are the signs for that? What? Anger for Allah, what is the sign for it? I'm going to be discussing this, but forgive me, I'm going to leave it till the end. The one I want to concentrate on is the second one. And this is my starting point. The very first level of chivalry. I'm not going to tell you, do something great. When people slip, I'm not going to tell you, people insult you. No. People slip. You know, when somebody does something wrong, when somebody is having a problem, when somebody slips, does something bad, how do you react? That is the first level of chivalry. The first level of chivalry is a taghafl al zalla meaning what? You overlook the slips of, other, of others. What do you mean overlook? I'll give you an example that Ibn Qayyim cites. Ibn Qayyim cites this example. Hatim ibn Asam, one of the righteous people. You know, and the woman came to ask him a question. I want you to imagine that she comes to this great and she's asking and it is said while she's asking a sound came out from her. She passed the gas. Is that embarrassing? Can you imagine that you're asking a sheikh and like all of a sudden and she became so embarrassed. So embarrassed. Right? 
Now, what, what does happen? Some, what would you do? Some people would, don't you have any haya? Is that haram to say that? No. But I embarrassed it, right? Some other people, I will say nothing. But what will I do? Just my face will express it. I thought like, that's enough, right? I didn't say, oh yeah, it's just a frown. And I won't speak. But Hatim al Asam did something. Let's see a higher level. You know what he did? He said, can you increase your voice, please? So the woman said, ah, oh, he's deaf. He doesn't hear. He didn't hear it. So he relieved her from having to apologize. You understand the concept here? When somebody slips, my reaction. The first reaction is you blame him. Why did you do that? The second is I will not talk, but you know, I'll just be silent. And then that person might need, yeah, please, I'm sorry. The third level is to do what? I act in such a way that he thinks I, did, I didn't even see that. Don't worry about it. So when you slip, my response to you is what? I relieve you from your need to apologize. A recent example. A sheikh in our modern time, without mentioning names this time. And this is an amazing example. This is a true story. This great sheikh came, he gave a lecture, and people are attending and everything. And then this person wants to ask him more. So he's walking with him to his car. Ya yeah, sheikh, this and that, and he's answering. He goes to the car, right? And the, this person is yani, opening the door, the sheikh goes in, right? Opens the window, and this person closes the door, and he's still discussing, you know, the, the, please, ya yeah, sheikh, this and this and this. And, the person driving said it was like maybe 15 minutes, 20 minutes, this person, right? And then after a while, this person goes away. Then the sheikh turns to that person who's riding the car and tells him, can you please open the door? Why? He said, it seems that he closed the door on my finger. Ya sheikh, and he opens the door and the finger is bleeding. You spent 20 minutes answering his question. He closed, you understand what I said? Why? He said, I didn't want him to be in pain. Do you know what will happen if he dis He loves me. If he, dis he, if he discovers he did this to me, what will happen to him? If it happened to you, you'd be mad. Sorry, Sheikh, I didn't mean it. And you'd feel what? Horrible. I do not want him to feel that feeling. I'm relieving him of the burden of apologizing. That is shivering. That is pain. I spoke about making fun, right? One of the best uses of making fun is when people sleep, to relieve them. Salah al-Din al-Ayyub, one of my favorite characters. I learned Shibri a lot from him, by the way, personally. Yeah. His life is amazing. In one of the most difficult situations in his life, the Battle of Haq, those of you who know what I'm speaking about, a battle that was two years, winter, mud, it wasn't going well, hundreds of thousands of crusaders, his, there was a disease everywhere, his friends are dying, the Muslims are... People are being killed, and it's a yeah, very hard situation. You know what I mean? And Salah being full sick in this situation. And his very difficult situation, uh, uh, the reason I'm describing this, sometimes when we're tense, you have a difficult day at work. You go back home, you're angry. Why are you angry? Oh, sorry, I mean, it was horrible at work today. You know what I mean? He was in such, and this is not work. It's a two years battle. And it's amazing battle. And difficult situation. And he's sick, and he was sick, he couldn't even sit. You know, like he had the, something in his skin and the pain, and he had to be sleeping on his side, and it's very painful, and the doctors are around him. And he, one of his servants, he asked for water, get me some water. So one of the servants of Salah al-Din, and he, he goes and he gets water, he comes back. And he, he said he got very hot water, you know, like really hot. He trips, and he spills it on the Sultan, Salah al-Din al this is the Sultan. It's not, you know, understand what you... And this is hot water. And he said he almost died. You know, like, uh, he's sick. And, you're... and he said, can you make it colder, please? He didn't say a word. So this man, okay, okay, he goes and he gets... And it said, he got ice cold water. Terribly cold. He goes, he trips again. And it falls on Salah al -Din. They said the Sultan almost died. And he could not take that. And that person, this is the second time. What would you do? You know what he did? He looked up to him and he told him the following. If you want to kill me, let me know and do it quickly. <laughs> Why do you think he said that? It's to relieve him of what? Do you understand the concept here? You don't need to apologize. It's okay. That is him. That is to 
That is chivalry. Salah al-Din could have harmed. It's not that he's weak. Know that. Chivalry is not that I apologize because I'm weak. He could have harmed him. That's easy for him. But I have full ability to do it. But I choose to do what? And he didn't say, go away. That's a beautiful response. That's chivalry. Right? So, at the khafu al when somebody sleeps, how do I sleep? Now, the reason this is important, unfortunately, I have to say, we have to start from the negative. When people slip, what do we do? Oftentimes, you know, shamata, ta'ir, ridiculing. You know, when somebody does something wrong in the community. You know, when somebody slips and does something haram in the community. Haram, wrong. What do you do? Many of us, you know the concept of Look at people, look what they're doing. Look at that sister. Did you see what she did? Look at that chair. You know? When somebody sleeps, we start by doing what? A ta'ir. Putting that person down. Ridiculing that person. Now that's negative. Our, you ha we have to start by getting rid of this. Never make fun of anyone when he sleeps. Never ridicule anyone, ever. Including when he does something haram. And I put the hadith for you. Why is that important? One scary hadith. How? Tell me something. What should I do when somebody slips? So, tell me a practical exercise. Something that helps me to, to be that way. What is it? Practically. Here is one. The hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Intermediate. لا تظهر الشماتة لأخيك فيرحمه الله ويبديك. Do not ridicule your brother. لا تظهر الشماتة. Do not ridicule. Do not put down your brother. Lest Allah will be merciful to him, will save him from what he's doing, and he will afflict you. Ibn al-Qayyim describing this, him and Imam al-Harawi, they say this, وَعَلَى أَنَّ كُلَّ طَاعَ رَضِيْتَهَا مِنْكْ رَضِيْتَهَا مِنْ نَفْسَكْ مِنْ نَفْسِكْ فهي عليك وكل معصية عيارت بها أخاك فهي إليك Explaining this, they say no for a fact Every single good deed that you do that you feel that I'm satisfied with it is against you, it was not accepted it's not good, it's not good deed anymore and every single sin معصية, sin, haram wrong thing, sinful thing that you ridiculed your brother with you put him down with you know what I mean? Know that it is going to be for you. And the Qayyim says, describing this, what is meant here is what? Be very careful. If you ever ridicule one of your brothers, make fun of him because of a sinful thing he did. The, the, the threat here, you will do the same thing. Why is that important? What does... I'll be frank. So you think that way. When you see someone doing something wrong, he slipped. He did a sin, haram, he drank wine, he did this, he committed this horrible thing. When I say, astaghfirullah, look what people are doing nowadays. Look at him, look, what, what, look at what she's doing, look at how she's dressed. Look at how he's, you know when we do this, what does it mean? When I say this, what does it mean? It's as if I'm saying, that is beneath me. That, that, that look at people, I can never be like this. That is so low. People have no shame anymore, you know this? That, that is implicitly I'm saying I'm beyond this. I can never do something like that. That is urge, that's that is self-admiration, that is kibbut, that is arrogance. And Ibn Qayyim says, know for a fact that this sin that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala caused him to fall in, it might have led to that he will be broken. You know when you fall in a sin, what happens? It breaks him. And he's broken. And that is more beloved to Allah than your arrogance. And know for a fact, and he says that many of the people that are looking down on others are in fact in sins greater than the sins that they're blaming others for. And they don't even realize it. Their arrogance, their self-admiration is a worse thing than, than adultery, than drinking wine. This of yours, this arrogance and claiming as if I will never do this. How do you know that? It's arrogance. Are you beyond that? Is it because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as I said, gave you something, now you're going to, to reward by ridiculing others, making fun of them? And the only way for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to cure that person, Ibn Qayyim says that, if Allah wants good for that person, what does he do? If, if Allah intends bad for that person, he leaves him. 
Why? He doesn't see he's doing anything wrong, and his arrogance and his self-admiration is detrimental to him. When Allah wants good for that person, he has to do what to him? He has to be broken. And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when you do that, you will end up, Allah will make you do the same thing. And I tell myself, I don't know my khatima. I don't know what's happening to me. I might be doing the same thing after 10 years. I don't know. Do you know what will happen after 10 years? Do you know your khatima? What's your last deed? I don't know. And now, I, if that doesn't help, I tell myself this. And this is wallahi practical. You have a daughter. You have a son. I have a daughter and a son. Tell me that I can guarantee that my daughter will not be doing the same thing. Can anyone guarantee that for his kid? This is a reality. Your kids, their hearts are not in your hands, right? And I tell myself, I better be very careful. If I start ridiculing her, ridiculing him, I might end up with my own kid doing the same thing. If I love my kid, if I love my kid, I better be very careful. And that deters me immediately. I cannot show this response of ridicule because I'm afraid. You see what I'm saying? This is a practical way. My love to my kid becomes a means for me now to deter me from ridiculing others. As a matter of fact, you think that way. I think of my daughter and my son in that position. This brother is drinking wine. Stuff horrible and he's drunk. I think, what if my son was doing the same thing? May Allah protect him. But this is how I think. If that was my son, what would I want people to do to him? Do I want people to ridicule him? I want people to be what? Compassionate to him, to invite him, right? To show him please. And therefore now, you see, I, I, I act with this in mind. I'm acting and, Ya yeah, Allah, please. And I know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can reciprocate this. Is that practical enough? Does this yani, work? So we imagine that and we the Prophet وسلم, in the hadith, just like what the Prophet did, in his time, there was a person, this is a very famous hadith in Bukhari, a person drank, not one time. And the hadith says that, this person used to drink and they drink him. And you know, it's, it's doing something wrong, that is something haram proven on him. So one of the companions got upset. This is not the first time. And he said, How many times do they bring him? Yani, don't you stop. You're in Medina. You're a companion of the Prophet. You know what I mean? What is this? You become, uh, yeah, you know, if you drink in the, the yeah, hidden nobody, but you drink and you become drunk and people see you on the street. Couldn't you? Yeah, at least you do it in the, yeah. but you keep doing this and they keep bringing you. And then he said, bring you. And he said the following statement. La'anak Allah. May Allah curse you. It's angry. And the Prophet وسلم, said, La, la la'anak. No, do not curse him. This person loves Allah and His Messenger. Do not curse him. What did I say? This person does what? Loves Allah. You know what happened when the Prophet said that? This person said, what did the Prophet say? In another narration. He said that you love Allah and His Messenger. The Prophet said that. He started crying and he repented. In another hadith, another person said, Akhzak Allah. You know, may Allah put you down. The Prophet said, no. Do not be an aid for shaitan against your brother. Do you understand what? To make it modern day example. To make it more clear, this concept, this shaitan thing. A person comes to another person and says, did you see what uh, this so and so is saying this about you? You know, this happens in our community. Did you hear what they say about you? So and so, he said this and this and this and this, right? You know what this person responded? Yes. I am going to anger the person who ordered him to do this. May Allah forgive you. The person said, what are you speaking about? Who ordered him to say bad things against you? He said, Shaitan. Do you understand the meaning? When he saw somebody, I saw one of my brothers insulting me. That person saw what? Shaitan over... Yeah. Shaitan won here. Shaitan convinced him to do that. Now I'm not dealing with him, I'm dealing with Shaitan. I'm going to make Shaitan angry. You told him to transgress against me, look what I'm going to do. May Allah forgive him. Another person, when that happened, the person came and told him, you know, so and so saying this and that against you. The answer that came back, and look at this answer. 
Didn't Shaitan find a better postman other than you? Basically, you need a new job. Stop being the postman. Didn't Shaitan find any better one for this job to be a postman of Shaitan? So, deal with people that way. It's not when somebody slips, we never, never ridicule anyone. Ever. لا توصل الشماكة لأخيك. Never. A believer never ridicules anyone. Maybe with again, maybe one, one story or something. One, one point that seven more minutes. Like uh, I, I can go into another uh, another topic, but the first level of charity deals with people sleeping, and we said be very careful. The the, the deterrent for me is the following: I don't know my khatima, and I know what I don't know what will happen to my children. Right? Another level to think about Allah Subhanahu wa Taala's attributes, reflecting Allah's attributes. Allah is a Jabbar, one of his attributes, one of his names. And Jabbar has many meanings, the compeller, the irresistible. It's the compeller, it's the irresistible. But from the meanings of a Jabbar is the mender. The mender, Allah is the one that mends. It's his attribute. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created our bodies that way. When we break a bone, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, doctors don't do anything. All what they do is they put the bone back, to, you know, one in front of the other and wait. Allah created our body, that's a Jabbar, that's a manifestation of His attribute. I can mend. Similarly, Allah can mend hearts too. When my heart is broken, when my sin breaks me, this is the worst time. When I'm broken, sometimes people break me. Somebody insults me and breaks, and sometimes the, I'm broken because of me. My sins humiliate me. You know that I'm completely broken. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that mends, and He loves to mend. So he loves to mend people. If I am to reflect this attribute, what does that mean? I should be Abdul Jabbar. It means that I should be doing what? Mending the people. Mending. And the people that need mending the most are those who slip in sins. Those who despair from the mercy of Allah. Those who slip and reach an extent that they're about to despair from the mercy of Allah. Those are the ones that needs mending the most. Therefore, if I see this attribute, and I didn't have time to speak about it, and I'm living by a Jabbar, and I'm Abdul Jabbar, I'm the servant of a Jabbar. I'm looking in my community who's sleeping. And when I find one sister or one brother that slipped and did something bad and people are accusing him or her, that is the person I'm going to go to. And that's the person I'm going to be nice to. And that's the person I'm going to help with all my power for him to stand back on his feet. I'm Abdul Jabbar. May Allah mend me. I reflect that back to me. I cannot ridicule anyone. Allah wants to mend and I break. When you ridicule people, when you put them down, you make them dismay. I finish with this story. Five minutes. And this is a real story that happened in Syria. There was this person that used to make fun. What I'm speaking of, making fun of people, ridicule, right? One day there was a blind person passing by. He used to sit on a cafe. And he, and he wants to make his friends laugh. So what did he do? He starts mocking him. And he started mimicking him. You know, walking beside him, making him. And people are laughing, people are laughing. But what happened? This man, you can imagine, his heart was broken. I'm blind. And this person is mimic. And, and he was really heartbroken. Allah is a Jabbar. Now what happened? This person goes home, nothing happened. But after a year passes, a two, years, two years passes, his wife got pregnant. He has a son. His son, his son is blind. And he said, the pain, the pain of it was so much, I couldn't deal with it. I could not pay this. I can't handle it. So I, basically he detached himself from his son. You know that when something is so painful. So he, he went to the mother. Here is the money. You take care of him. You know, it's so painful. I can't relate to him. And then he said, I, I, I used to be the same way. And yeah, he didn't stop. Until, until my son was seven years old. And his mother one, one day went out. And it was Juma. And I was alone with him in the house. You know, me and him. And he, he told me, he came. I'm minding my own business. He came, Baba. It is, can you take me to the masjid? It's Juma. I said, what? He said, can you take me to the masjid? You go to the masjid? He said, yes, I go every day. 
And he said, this man didn't choose to pray. He's a Muslim, but he's in his own world. He said, my son wants to go to the masjid. He said, he was, you know what? Yes, I'll take you. Seven years old, he wants to go to the masjid. I'll take you. And then he said, I, I watched him. He's making wudu. They're making the dua and making wudu. And he said, it's okay. Making the dua of wudu and making wudu and then putting, you know, the shoes, the, the right and the left and making the adhaya and let's go. And he said, he starts, we go to the masjid, he starts entering with the proper feet first, making the dua and his father is like, I feel him with the sheikh. And he goes to the masjid, he sits down, Baba, can you get a Quran, please? He says, why? You can't see. He said, no, it's for you. It is Jum'ah. I want to, I memorize Surah Al-Kahf. It's Jum'ah, it's good to recite Surah Al-Kahf. I'm going to be reciting and you please check it for me. And the man said, my kid seven years old, Namrai Surat al -Kahf. Look at what a righteous woman can do, the mother. And he said, I sat down. He starts to recite. He recites, I cry. He recites, I cry. He recites, I repent. He said, I went out the masjid that day at Transformers. I could not. I changed. I went back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This kid changed me. When you look to this, what happened here? What happened here? This is in Jabbar. That, first of all, was that kid a, a calamity? Was it a punishment, really? No. Was it? It was one of the best things Allah gave him. And that kid, a righteous kid, although he's blind, memorizing the Quran, praying, that's a gift. But you broke the heart of a person. You had arrogance, you had self-admiration, you had, you had, you did that to him. Allah needs to mend his heart by breaking you. And unlike any other person, when we break someone, we, you know, when we break, we break so that he's never later. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala break to mend. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala broke that person by giving him what? That, that child, that son. And in breaking him, he did what to him? He mended him. See that? That's a joke. Never, never ridicule really anyone. You see a drunk person, a homeless person outside, remember this. You do not know what happens to your child. You don't. Be very careful. It's a threat. If anything, you do the opposite. I need to mend him. May Allah mend me and my son. That's the first level of chivalry. Just leaving, leaving this ridiculing stuff, making fun of people. And when people slip, you act nicely. You, you, you relieve them from the need to apologize. Is that enough for the first level for today, inshallah? So, what is the homework? I said a number of things, do you remember? We have to be thankful, always, for any good manners we have. And we have to attribute that to Allah, not ourselves. My IQ, my manners is not me. You, you gave it to me, alhamdulillah, jazakumullah. You thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that. This is number one. Number two, remember, companionship. Be, you want your manners to change, you want to be better with people, be mindful of who you're with, what you have, the games you're playing, the programs you're watching, the radio shows you're, you're listening to. They change me. I have to be careful of that. And we said, what should we do? Positive? Go for nature. Remember? Go for nature 20 minutes in Dikr daily. Before going home, walk slowly, drive slowly. It's hard, but it's mujahada. It's mujahad al-anah. Hilm al-anah. In the way I drive, in the way I walk, in the way I eat, in the way I type, everything. Right? So that's the second thing. Right? Number three from the last time. Making dua consistently for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to improve my manners. The sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma ahdini ila ahsan al-aslaq. Fa'innahu la yahdi ila yahdi. To Allah guide me to the best manners. Nobody can guide to best manners except you. And remove from me the ugly manners. No one can remove those manners except you. This is a part of a hadith of Ali ibn Abi Talib. It's a sahih hadith. Make that. And that's a proof, this hadith, that manners can change. Manners can change. Akhlaq can change. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik la ilaha illa anta nasakfiruk wa natubu ilayk wa la'asa inna al-insana lafi khus illa al-ladhina amanu wa amanu wa sallihati wa tawasawbil khakti wa tawasawbil sallihati. Rizakum Allah wa khair.